Hello, hello. Is it working? I don't have my glasses on. I keep getting fogged up. <laughs> um, let me see. My expression tracking has been weird since I updated VC Face. But hey, hey, it's me, Blossom, the mischievous possum. I dug myself out of the trash to come see you. How you all doing? Today, yes, is um. I print. <laughs> Today is uh, we're still floating. So let me get that real quick. Right. And then I have to get this. There we go. Angie. Oh, beautiful possum. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Whoa. Oh. Uh, I'm streaming. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. <sighs> Let me try putting on my glasses on. Beyond, <laughs> be gone, interloper. Yes, yes. Be gone, interloper. I'm gonna put back on my glasses. See if that helps at all. Now I'm not so squinty. I. I literally, I lost track of time in the shower, so I just jumped out of the shower. <laughs> and, uh, I'm still like, you know, like, your body heat is way up. <laughs> Put on your eyeballs. <laughs> when your body heat is way up and, like, it makes your, um, glasses fog. I don't know if that's for everyone, but, uh, that is for me. And so my glasses keep fogging. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. Yes, yes, it's the worst. <laughs> My gosh. Mm. Hate when that happens. Yes, yes, glasses gang, glasses gaming, and you can understand. <laughs> All right. Okay. My tracking's been funky since I updated. Um VC face. I don't know why it's it's like extra sensitive with every expression. So if I lower my eyebrows like at all, it um, makes me go frowny. Or if I uh, open my eyes even a little bit more than normal, it's surprised. Oh. When you go from cold to warm, yes, yes. You like uh, leave your car or house or something uh, in the winter. It's just boof. okay. Oh, all right. I forgot I was here. Okay, yes. We are back on the adventures of Olga Buttermuffin and Orange Blossom. <laughs> um, we're in the ghost town, I believe. Talk to your partner. Ghost houses. We're weird, right? Never heard of a ghost anything except people. Gary was seeing a ghost cactus once. Yeah, there's one down at the end of the street, too. How does a g cactus die with unfinished business? Not, uh, do, uh, did not poking enough people? Okay, I'll buy that. <laughs> I need to remember the, uh, voices that I gave them all. Oh, huh? All the buildings in this little town are w weirdly hazy and translucent. Like, oh, ghosts. It's a literal ghost time. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Ooh. A ghost tumbleweed. All right. Saloon. You might expect to be able to just walk straight through the door of a ghost building, but some kind of force is preventing that. I guess you could knock on the force. Okay. Stable. You peer through the wall of the stable. Instead of ghost horses, you see a lot of ghost filing cabinets. Not sure, you, uh, or you could lead a ghost horse to this, even if you wanted to. <laughs> this place? You've been here? The ghostly jailhouse seems to be stacked up with boxes of old papers. Uh, you don't see any ghost criminals, but usually there isn't any uh, longer than a life sentence anyways. <laughs> This ghostly general store seems to be selling mostly office supplies. Ghost office supplies. 
ghost cactus, ghost cactus. Uh, this is a regular cactus. Well, the ghost of a regular cactus. Well, the ghost of a regular cactus with the ghost of a pencil stabbed into it? Take pencil. Try to grab the pencil, but your hand keeps slipping through it. Dang, nabbit. Town hall. Looks like the ghost of a town hall. It looks like a regular town hall, except, you know, the whole ghost thing. <laughs> Heck of a puzzle? Okay, that's gonna be interesting. Okay. Your fist makes a distant, echoey plap sound on the barroom door, and the ghostly voice comes out of nowhere. Howdy there, gal! New in town? Yeah, I was wondering if sorry I can't do business with you until you you have a visitor identification card. Ain't supposed to even talk to you, really. Okay, where do I get one? Try the town hall at the end of the street. Thanks. Can I not even... Uh, fist makes a distant, echoey plap sound on the stable door, and a ghostly voice comes out of nowhere. Go away! Excuse me, but you aren't authorized. Shoot! Well, that's rude. Uh... Nobody's home! Excuse me, but... I've never heard of you. Sheesh. Salute! I want to spittoon! We're closed. Excuse me, what? Closed, I said. No visitor ID for sale. Uh, well, that's rude. Oh, okay. Ah, a visitor. You'll be needing a visitor uh, identification card. I guess so. I'll be happy to help you fi uh, help fill the forms, but most living people have trouble holding the pages. You'll be needing a number three pencil. If you're fi uh, filling in the form, can't you just use your own pencil? I will be, but the instructions very uh, say very clearly that the applicant must have a number three pencil. Uh, number three pencil. Is it number two, the pencil, the usual kind? I suppose, but a number three pencil is 50% more official. All right. <laughs> Doesn't like the loon. Okay. Where can I get one? Try the Department of Requisitions just next door. You mean the general store? It's been more specific these days, but yes. It's a general store. It's more specific. Be right back. Uh, one moment. My eyes are sort of bothering me. <laughs> I can't go stop the accent now. Uh, need a pencil for it. No visitor ID, no supplies. Alright, so he won't give that to me. Hello, the general store don't won't give me a pencil without a visitor ID. No, certainly not. They aren't authorized to deal with anyone who doesn't have an ID. So how am I supposed to get a number three pencil? Suppose I could issue a temporary visitor permit. You don't need a pencil for that one. Okay, great. What's your last name? Tame? Alvarado? Buttermuffin? Goldithwhat? Shortright? Slapshank? Buttermuffin. First name? Puddin? Pico, Bobcat, Taint, Slim, Olga. Middle name, Trouble, Marshall, Murder, Justice, Danger. Keep making that accent, you're gonna get stuck that way. Ow, no! What's my middle name? Trouble, Marshall, Murder. Olga, Trouble, Butter Muffin, Murder. Olga, Justice. Olga, Olga Danger, Butter Muffin. Hmm, which should I go with? Nice. All good, nice. All good, danger, butter muffin. Great, where are you from? All good, danger, butter muffin. A little farm outside Boring Springs. Staying in dirt water at the moment. I love wherever the wind takes me. Oh. I love the dirt water at the moment. Oh, well, if you set your sights low enough, you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> Right, how many bars are in the window of the adjacent department of records? What? It's a quiz. Make sure you've actually been paying attention and care a little bit of our town. Instead of just breezing through to show your dedication. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh-oh. Uh, six? Okay! Correct! All right.
right, everything seems to be in order. Here's your temporary visitor pass. Thanks, it expires in 11 seconds. What? Temporary permit card where you apply for an actual visitor ID. It has all like a danger butter muffin written on it. It's probably already expired. This happened to the furries that uwu stuck. They kept uwuing so much. Just uwu. Okay, uh. Uh, okay. Just fill out the acquisition form. Last name, Butter Muffin. Secure bitter. Have a nice day. Okay. What's your last name? Butter Muffin. First name, Olga. Little name, Danger. Dirt Water. Six. Butter muffin. What? Has it been 11 seconds? Had it? Butter muffin. Olga. Danger. Boring Springs. Much like it, but it's home. Boring like it says on the label. That's nice. How many bars are in the window? Okay. Six. Give, 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 The temporary bass is basically useless. Maybe there's somewhere else you can find a pencil around here. Ah! Well, you managed to snack the pencil with the corner of your temporary visitor permit. And yank it out of the cactus. Nice. Oh, wait. This is a number four pencil. Got a, a ghost pencil. Number four? What? You didn't know pencils of ghosts? What do you think ghost writers use? All right. <laughs> Got a pencil. That, madam, is a number four pencil, not a number three. Something you wouldn't notice. Look, number four is like 33% more official, right? Ha! Nice try, but it obviously doesn't work like that. Do I need like a... Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Someone's marked to mounted a pencil sharpener on one of the balcony posts for some reason. Sharpen a pencil! Yes, okay. You stick the number four pencil on the sharpener and grind off about a quarter of it. You got sharpened ghost pencil. It's a ghost of a number four pencil which you sharpen the hell out of. <laughs> number three pencils already sharp enough and if you grind it all the way down it to a two it might cause a problem. Alright. Turn four and two three. We'll see. All right. Number three pencil. Here it is. That's a number four pencil. No, it's seventy five percent of a uh, number four pencil. I see. Hmm. I don't see anything about this in the bylaws. Very well. I suppose it'll do. Let's get you started on that visitor identification permit. Thank God. Last name: Butter Muffin. First name. Olga, middle name, Danger. Olga, Danger Butterfamfin. Yep, that matches what it says here. Good, where are you from? Dirt water. If you ever decide to set your sights a little higher, I can recommend a good a drainage ditch. <laughs> okay, last question. How many bars are on the windows of the six? I'm afraid you'll have to be a little bit more observant than that. What? Department of Records. Here, paper tearing... But it was six last time. Didn't ask the same question as last time. What? Department of Records. <laughs> Department of Records. Mm. 
Wait, is this it? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> Last name, Butter Muffin. First name, Olga. Middle name, Danger. Dirt Water. Ten. Correct, all right. Everything seems to be in order. Allow me to officially welcome you to the town of Ghostwood. Here's your visitor ID. Okay. Zero identification card for the town of Ghostwood. It says Olga Danger Butter Muffin fin on it has a blurry photograph that could maybe be you if you squint thank you say was it always called ghostwood or yep total uh, total coincidence okay all right do I need any room uh miss butter muffin how can I be of service uh I'm here on the behalf of mayor breadwood Jeez, <laughs> finally I'm here on behalf of the Mayor Breadbird. He needs a permit to do some logging in this area. I see. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. Just need to review the logging records to make sure there's no disqualifying incidents. Go to the Department of Records. It's two doors down. Tell him I need the Breadwood file pertaining to logging. Is something wrong? Not yet. I'm just stealing myself in anticipation. <laughs> ah! Alright. Wait. It said two, not this one. Something I can get for you, Miss Butter Muffin? Uh, I can't think of anything. Alright. Miss Butter Muffin, was it? What can I do for you? I'm supposed to pick up a file on the town of Breadwood. Oh, you want the Department of Records? That's next door. This is the adjunct, de <laughs> adjunct Department of Records. Okay, thanks. You peer through the wall stable. Yep. Department of Records, how can I help you, Miss Buttermuffin? You're supposed to pick up a file in the town of Breadwood. One moment, please. Breadwood, Amplewood, Antiwood, Badwood. Did you mean Bagelwood? No, it's Breadwood. Just a suburb. Uh, it must be a suburb. Wait. They just said Breadwood! Beaverwood, Bestwood, Bitterwood, Bloodwood. Oh, here we are, Breadwood. Which section did you need? Logging records, local gossip, obituaries. Mmm, oh, this is pretty juicy. I'm afraid you need full resident lease status before I can share this with you, though. No, need anything else? Obituaries. Oh, you mean ghost birth announcements. Here you go. I can't read this. It's just different sizes of O's. You can't, you don't read ghost? Anyway, what I actually need Locking records. Can't read ghost. That's hilarious. <laughs> the section has been drown downgraded from disuse. You'll need to pick it up from the adjunct department of records next door. Naturally. Bring it back here when you got it and I'll put it in an official interdepartment document transfer folder for you. Is that really necessary? Absolutely, you can't transfer documents between departments without an inter-department de document transfer folder. It's unthinkable. Fine, fine. But these two are different. Okay. What can I do for you? I'm gonna pick up a file. Which file? Login reports for the town of Breadwood. Alright, one second. Uh, here we are, but uh, what's wrong? Well, these pages are all loose. I can't give them to you like this. What if they blow away? Just take them next door. They're giving me the documents folder. They'll be fine. No, no. What if a freak gust of wind as soon as you leave here? It could be chaos. So what do you propose? Well, unfortunately, I happen to be the one person in town on fit. Uh, wait, no. Fortunately, I happen to be the one person in town officially authorized to use a stapler. So you staple them together for me? I'd be glad to, but I don't have a stapler. Of course you don't. Why is there only one person who can use a stapler? Don't worry, all you have to do is go to the Department of Requisitions next door and requisition one. So I bring you a stapler and you give me the file. Yep, fine. <laughs> I need a rec to requisition a stapler. All right, first we need to fill out this recusation form. I figured. Last name. Butter Muffin. 
Olga, danger. Let me just check your is it her identification. Olga, danger butter muffin. Yes, it checks out cake or pie. Excuse me, dessert preference, cake or pie. Well, actually, I prefer. What does this have to do with? Well, it really depends because, like, some some cake is really, really good, but some pies are even better. Like, I really like key lime pie, and I'd probably take key lime pie over, like, a vanilla cake any day. But then there's, like, German chocolate cake, which is really good. The angry face is fitting. It's stuck on an angry face. Good, good. Hmm. I'm going to say pie because I have friend pie. <laughs> Erg, well, despite that, everything seems to be in order. <laughs> this file, here's your stapler. Great, thanks. One moment. I need to get water. My voice is a mess. Okay, I return. I have a cough drop here too. Boop. Crackercy will do that to a person. Yes, yes. Also, um, I got, uh, my aunt left a new pair of slippers and they're ridiculous and I love them. They're like these obnoxious duck ones, and they're real cute. <laughs> Alright, I got the ghost stapler. <laughs> Wait. Wouldn't ghost staples just go right through? Probably. <sighs> okay, got you a stapler. Great! Ah, there's nothing better than our new s that new stapler smell. Can I get a have a log <laughs> the logging report now? You bet, Kerchunk, here you go. Fresh, old, stapled, and wind resistant. Breadwood logging report. So, report on the Breadwood's past logging activities. Now you just have to pick up the folder you're supposed to carry it in. Thanks. <sighs> Mike said to be able to just rock. Okay, yeah. What can I do? <laughs> I need a drink immediately. No problem. Beer or whiskey? Uh, whiskey. Good choice. Only small problem, though. What it, and that is, I'm out of whiskey requisition forms. Mind going down to administration and picking up one? Fine. Great, thanks. Don't mention it. Wait. Did you say I have to go here? No, was it here? Yes, I need a risky requisition form for the bar down the street. Bar? Oh, you mean the Department of Liberation. So sure, I can give you a whiskey requisition form. Great. Is what I'd like to say, but I'm out of tra form transfer envelopes. What? I can't transfer a form to a different department without a form transfer envelope. Make sure it doesn't get tampered with during transport. You must be joking. No, but I madam, this is serious business. I'll tell you what, though. If they should have a supply of spare form transfer envelopes at the Department of Requisitions next door. <sighs> I'm impressed they refrain from the we don't serve spirits here joke. 
This is why they all died. They just... Uh, yep. Form transfer envelope. Alright, which color? Color? Naturally, different colors for different purposes. Chain of regular inter-department transfers. Blue is extra mon municipal transfers. Red for emergencies and green for bribes. Tan? So, oh, just, they're out of, uh, first to a form's final destination, uh, technically it's extra municipal since I'm just a visitor, so give me the blue one. And then first to a form's final destination, where are you taking it? Department of Liberations. Oh, nope, sorry, that's intermunicipal, can't give you a blue one, right? I have to deal with this bureaucracy the more of an emergency this becomes. Give me a red one. Sounds reasonable here. Here you go. Emergency form transfer. We could... Don't tell me it's the wrong color. Oh, red one. You must really need that drink. Here you go. One whiskey requisition form. Filled. Whiskey requisition form the Ghostwood Bar needed in bright red emergency form transfer envelope. Thanks. Either this is the same way to get food, they all uh, uh, and they all starved. Or <laughs> they all starved because of the stupid local government. That sounds like a mood. You must really be thirsty. Okay, let's get this filled out. Last name, a butter muffin. <laughs> Olga. Danger. Get that whiskey now. Sorry, we're fresh out of whiskey. I hear Valve. I hear Valve. I Valve to destroy this place. I will raise the buildings and salt the earth. <laughs> no, no, don't get all bent out of shape if you go tell the Department of Requisitions we'll set us up with the fresh case. Fine. I like how my character's just gotten so pissed off she's ready to destroy everything. The bar, I mean, Department of Liberations is out of whiskey. Oh, thanks for letting us know. We'll get a case in over. I don't have to fill anything out? Nope, they'll be handled on delivery. Great, in two days. You don't look at me that way. There's a lot of processing and forms for delivery, food delivery. Someone got sick of all of it and shot him in frustration. Yep. The whiskey show up yet? No, not yet. Try again for tomorrow. <laughs> Can I actually get that? Like, if I spend the days? Let's get the beer then. Just gotta take your name down. Butter muffin. Oh god. Danger. <laughs> Let me match up against your visitor ID. Uh, including the deposit on the bottle? Okay. A ghostly bottle of beer materializes in your hand. Ghost beer? It isn't clear if this is this beer that died or if ghosts made it pretty dead. One thing for sure, it's bound to even less filling, be less even less filling than light beer. Increases your muscle, mysticality, and moxie by fire for the rest of the day. Oh, it's cold. Okay. All right. Back with those papers. All right, just let me put those in official interdepartment <laughs> document transfer folder for you, and there you go. Ah, <sighs> thank you. It's been special. Hi, got that file for you. Redwood login records. Fine, let's have a look. Oh, for the love of, what's wrong? The idiot stapled the pages together right in the middle. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm I'm dead. This is 
I'm that's I'm dead. This I'm become an official resident. This is why we took his name simple away in the first place. The file is unreadable. You're going to have to take it back and tell him to unstable it. Administration wants you unstable these papers. Oh, sorry. I'm only authorized for stapling. Not unstapling. Try next door at the Department of Records. I think they have an unstapler there. Of course. Need some papers unstapled. Okay, I'm fully authorized sta uh, unstapler, so that's no problem. Spoke too soon, did you? Well, it's just it. I don't see a stapler mover anywhere. Oh, that's right. The Department of Liberations borrowed it. To open beer bottles. <sighs> you have this Department of Records staple remover. Sure do you think pops the tops off of beer bottles like you wouldn't believe. As long as it removes stapler, uh, staples, I'll be happy. Imagine it does, but I'm afraid I'm not authorized for unstapling. You'll have to take it back to over to the records. Here you are. Goes to a stapler remover. It looks like a weird middle fanged monster mouth, except now it's in ghost form. Now your office job is even spookier. Great. <laughs> oh wait, that's the wrong one. Wait, yeah. Here's your stapler remover bag. Great, let me just have a look at those papers of yours. Just text agent records uh, up to his old tricks again. Now see, uh, they don't even need to be stapled. It's what the part of uh, interdepartment document transfer folder is for after all. Good chunk. Alright, here you go. Thanks. Here you go with a mallet. <laughs> Good. Okay. Back with the unstapled files. I can't see any problems with this. I'm frankly amazed. Let's start on the paperwork for the logging permit. I'm no longer amazed. Last name, Butter Muffin. First name, Olga. Middle name, Danger. Let me check that against your visitor identification. Welcome, Danger Butter Muffin. Okay, that's fine. I need this. Just need the stamp here, Kerchunk, and sign it here. Scribble, and now you sign it here. Sign, scribble, and also here. Sign, an initial here. Initial, scrib, scribble, scribble, scrib, scrib, and here. Scrib, and sign here. Scribble. Good. Now just take us back to the mayor Breadwood and have him sign it on the line here and initial over there. Are you kidding me? I don't know how to do that. All right. To Breadwood we go. Notice an old crate off the Osado Trail. Looks like it's been there for a while since weeds and or cactuses have grown up around it, depending on where you got this random event. Open with crow <laughs> Uh, you brush the weeds ca slash cactuses out of the way and help yourself to randomly generated contents. Get back on the trail. Oh, I forgot there was a drunk horse there. Hello! <sighs> Excuse me, Mayor, I have some papers you need to sign for that login permit. Alright! Oh, ghost papers. Oh, uh, this stuff is weird. Yeah, I think I need a ghost pencil for this. Loan him your pencil. Here, you can borrow mine. Sign down here and initial over here. After some fumbling with the ghostly pencil, the mayor eventually manages to sign and initial the form. All right, mayor. I'll be back soon with that permit. Uh, permit, God willing. Good luck. I don't know what that point is. The fetch quests to end all fetch quests. Yes. Back to Ghostwood! Yay! And we're here. Got the signature. Great, just sign the last line at the bottom where it says receipt. Something wrong? You cover your face with your hands. I loaned my pencil to the mayor.
Okay. <laughs> oh dear, excuse me while I go kill everything. <laughs> it did kill me, it did. Faint wispy light at the side of the road oh, it resolves into a sad looking ghost as you pass. Unable to speak, it makes sad woo noises and gestures to the roadside grave marker, which has fallen over for some reason. The huge millstone. Stand it back up! You heave the millstone back on its edge and wedge it with a couple of sticks. The ghost sighs with re relief and fades away. Wiping off the moss, you see the uh, ip ip Judd Milson. Oh, it's because it's a millstone. Milson. <laughs> Died when a millstone fell over on him. Oh my gosh, those weren't sticks. Those were. B oh, yeah, these are definitely just sticks. <laughs> Okay. Give me my pencil back. <laughs> Excuse me, Mayor. Yes. You still have the ghost pencil. I need that. Oh, terribly sorry. I think it's haunting my beard. Yeah, here you go. Sharpen ghost pencil. Yanks. Afraid for when you get here. <laughs> Find your abandoned crate on the side of the trail. Addressed to Fort Treason. Yes. Give... Okay. Don't eat the pencil. Crunch. And we're here fine. <laughs> Got the mayor's signature on the slogging firm. Just sign the last line on the bottom where it says really see it. Sign. Alright, that's everything taken care of. Redwood's lodging permit is hereby approved. Finally. Wonderful. <laughs> Processing will take about 48 hours. What? Well, everything has to be fi filed, and the actual permit has to be printed, and so on. You can pick it up in two days. Great. This is how they died, yeah. I forget what else we needed to do. I don't want to skip the day until I'm sure. Um, what do you think we should do next? Um, stop to the skeleton raids out of the military so uh, north. Okay. East says you might want to consider recovering the yeast you told the breadwood mayor you get from the yeasty gang at the Schmontz Brewery. Okay. Okay, the Alexandria Ranch. Help the brain of breadwood get that logging permit from the ghosts. Buffalo Bones. Oh yes, Buffalo Bones. Waiting for permits and sanity. I'm sure everyone was mur murdered here. Okay, much obliged. Alright, I did have... Where's the petting cemetery? <laughs> petting cemetery, there we go. I got enough bones for... Uh, oh. Yes, you bet! Wondering, Sally? Let me see what you got. Apple. Hmm. Whoa, spell damage. I don't use spells, though. Um. Fungicide bomb. I do not need that. Pickaxe, pickaxe, pickaxe. Nothing good. Boo on you, Sally. Boo on you. <laughs> Transponder starts making a bleep noise. Okay. Uh, at least not in this encounter. Anyway, your voluntary risk taking is reward when you find a high tech thing. It's locked. I have keystones for days. 
cross your fingers as you feed the crate one of your valuable keystones. It opens to reveal. Voila! Punch cards. I think I needed the complicated ones to learn more vibrato desserts. Uh, got buffalo bones. Well, now these will do just uh, do fine, just fine. Excuse me while I go wire these together real quick. Sets a skeleton up on a pedestal and returns to give you a pouch of meat. Cool. Uh, no. And I needed. Didn't I need one more, or was that it? Buffalo skeleton. You know everything about it already. All right. Um. <laughs> How much uh, meat do I got? Because I want to get to the circus. Also, there's a destroyed campsite I want to check out. Because I know pie. Go the opposite way? Oh! Yes! Since you have reason to believe these tracks may be fake, you could either follow them or head in the opposite direction. You head to the opposite direction for about a half a mile and discover another campsite. Unless one is occupied, you observe the campers carefully from a distance before approaching. Considering that they're dressed as rodeo clowns for some reason, you're a little hesitant about approaching at all. Ugh. Doesn't even seem to be a rodeo anywhere nearby. Why would they do that? Approach the camp. Yeah! Clowns. Let me see. White fa face mans are uncomfortable making. Yeah, no kidding. Radio Clowns is playing harmonica. The tune he's playing basically goes doot doot doodly doot 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 doot. Clown is idly juggling a knife. Howdy, stranger, he says with a smile. Simple three man tent which probably sleeps of about 40 clowns. Radio Clown is eating a comically large hunk of meat. He narrows his eyes as you as if to say mine. Ah, I'm jealous. I'm hungry. Sure you're out foxing is three? Where's my out foxing? Do I have out foxing? Thick skin, sip cracker, and dick room. I don't think I have a foxin. X scan. Tough customer intimidating lot. Pick and foraging, sick crack and dicker and leather work. Yeah, I don't think I I have that. You get different skills. Um, say hello. Not slightly, but keeps playing. Can't even talk to that guy. Howdy, stranger. Uh, howdy. You guys are a long way from the circus. Do you know anything about the red camp nearby? You know about our circus? Yeah, Barnaby Bob's traveling circus something, right? Up north? Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus so sideshow. That's the one. It's way up north, though. You guys doing all the way down here? Clown exchanges. Clowns exchange glances. Camping. Can't you tell by the campfire? Uh, what I mean is, you guys camping all the way down here, so far from home. Oh, well, we're on break, so we decided to take in the sats. What sats, sir? In the middle of nowhere. Nonsense! Check out those cactuses over there, and those mountains. Well, all the sand. Plenty of things to see. Can you tell me a bit about your circus? It's for a random encounter after us. Maybe you get something else. Er, I thought you said you'd been. No, I've seen the big painted canvas walls and all, but I haven't actually been inside. So sell me on it. Let me hear your pitch. Oh, uh, gosh. You kind of put me on the spot here. I don't handle public relations stop stuff. Uh, uh, I do. He looks at the air clowns and they shook back at him. Concessions? Uh, concession. Oh, come on. Work at the place, don't you? Give me a scoop. Well, it's a circus, you know. There's food and games and a freak show and all the good circus stuff you love. Go and tell me more. Why are you bugging me? Just go see it for yourself. Uh, tell me, tell me, tell me. What's your deal? Are you cracked or something? Tell me. 
Tell me about your circus circus clown! Look, dang it! I really John my patience. Here's a free ticket. Go see for yourself and leave me alone. Why, thank you. That's quite gracious of you. <laughs> Converse. Um. There's knife. Thanks. It was a birthday present. Oh, is it your birthday recently? The crown grins at you. Not my birthday. No. Okay then. This is normal tickets. Pretty expensive. Yes. About the wreck camp? Count it with the meat chuckles quietly. Somebody's camp got wrecked? Wow, that's terrible. Whatever happened? Looks like the work of cows. You know, now that you mention it, we did hear quite a ruckus coming from not too far away. A lot out of, you know, mooing and right on, boys. The other two clowns nod in agreement. Please be careful see you around. You know a lot about cons, right? Now, why would you assume that? Just because we're clowns? Well, I'd figure it comes with the territory. Been a good 20 years since a rotary, uh, rodeo was an actual thing, you know. So why do you dress that way? Dress? Oh, well, it's a tradition. It's traditional after all. Isn't it inconvenient? What do you mean? Makeup and baggy clothes and all. It must be hard to talk to people when they're all creeped out. Uh, the makeup and baggy clothes and all. Wait, don't you take the costumes off between shows? <laughs> well... You might say that we're used to it. Taking it off would be more inconvenient, right, Phyllis? The two other clowns chuckle. Hard to talk to people when they're all creeped out. Oh, you think we're creepy? He leers at you, showing yellow teeth and a flickering light of the campfire. They almost look pointed. Uh, haha, <laughs> relax, partner. It's just old stories getting you worked up. I mean the old... Uh, you mean the old stories about how demon cows and demon clowns war against each other in hell? Whoop. Uh, moment. Rodeo clowns dress like that because the rodeos are sort of like reenactments of those battles. Done your homework. So what do you think? Are demon clowns real? Um. Well, yeah, but I'm just like maybe. I guess maybe the demon cow uh, cows turned out to be real after all. So why not the clowns too? Clown smiles, but his eyes are hard. It's sensible to keep an open mind. Well, you know, stranger, if clowns did turn out to be real, this could be an awful awkward predicament to find yourself in right now, wouldn't it? Awkward for you, clown. Oh, dearie, dear. Well, now, you go and say things like that, you know we can't let you leave here alive, right, stranger? Bring it, freak show. I'm gonna fight ya. <laughs> that was a noise. Okay. Oh. Get beefy! I smack him. Giggles. Bump. They can't even do anything to us. Um. A bunk. Oh, providing cover. Smash, smash. <laughs> Beat the heck out of that barrel. You go, Gary. Victory! The freaking noises, they haunt me. Yes! They're so creepy. It's one pack of demonic rodeo clowns that won't be troubling people anymore. Boy, did you not expect to be thinking that sentence today. <laughs> Go through their stuff. You, I got another circus ticket. For Gary. You poke around their campfire for a bit, but don't find anything of value apart from the leader's knife and a ticket to a circus. Well, a harmonica, maybe, but the clown had his lips all over it. Shudder. Clown knife. A uh, blade is of this haunting knife is glistening with clown spit. Ugh, people who lick their knives to look intimidating are basically the worst people. <laughs> and the ticket. Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling sideshow. Admit one plus partner. Oh, okay, I have an extra. You find a note. It's one of the, an, uh, in one of the clou lead clown's pockets. Ew. Seems to be the orders to check out our abandoned tannery not far from Dirtwater. It's probably a bad idea to let these guys wander around near town, so maybe you should investigate. Danny's tannery. Shudder. Okay, careful beings. 
Uh, scary white face, not man's mean and tricky seeming. Yeah, no kidding. Um, should I go to the tannery though, or tanneries? Oh, that day's close. Uh, I'll go to the circus first, because it seems like since these are connected, I want to see the circus before I. Ooh. The clown sneers at you as you return to the counter. Welcome to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow, ma'am. How can I help you? I'd like to see a circus, please. You came to our place then, <laughs> but if you want to get inside, you'll need a ticket. I just so happen to have one. The clown looks, the clown looks very surprised. What? How did you... Er, well, great. Good for you, ma'am. I'll just take that and stamp your hand for re-entry. There we go. Enjoy the show. What about my partner? Partners getting free. Thanks. I mean, I have a number one. Hello. Uh oh, white face, not man's. You know, probably a whole lot of them. Not safe pl place for to going. No, probably ought to try to find out what they're up to. Ah! Northern Cloudwort. Cloudwort pollen. It's a little pile of shimmering pollen from the Northern Cloudwort flower, which some scientists claim to be a source of all clown power. Increases your resistance to elemental damage by 15% for the rest of the day. Well, go to the channery? Do, should I go to the channery first before the circus? Channery or, or circus first? Is this, in, is this important? Either? I don't know. Uh, cows on? Caps up. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said calzone, and I was like, oh, I'm so hungry. I want a calzone. Not sure if it makes a difference. Oh. Did, when, when you played Pi, did, did you go to the uh, tannery first or the uh, circus, and were you able to access both? Went to tannery first, but you were able to access the cir circus after you you saw the tannery, right? Or have you not tried? The circus is still there after you go to the tannery. Okay. I didn't try, I went to the break from clowns. Okay. It's just like if the tannery is a, a covert thing, it's connected, then. Okay. Danny's tannery. Hello, a sign. What is the man's word? It says tannery. It's where we used to make uh, cow skins into leather. Ah, no, aha, no more wondering why cows are so angry. Yeah, you might have a point there. <laughs> Ouch, pointy. Oh, yeah. Sound like there's a lot of fighting going on inside the tannery, except instead of regular fighting, sounds like you used to, like shouting and gunfire and chairs being broken over people's backs, a lot of ghostly bellowing and shrill cackling laughter. Sounds like a real bad scene on the other, in other words. Enter the tannery. As you enter the tannery, the second thing you notice is that the place has been abandoned for years. Probably since the cows came home. A lot of the equipment is wrecked and all of it is covered with dust. First thing you notice is there are a bunch of rodeo clowns in there fighting with, well, they aren't cows exactly. They're more like the possessed skins of cows. It's a little strange because you've seen people wear uh, people wearing, for example, cow leather chaps. You've never seen anyone being attacked by their chaps. Maybe there's something about the tanning process that makes the leather impervious to possession, and these cow ghost whatevers are un are untanned tides. In any case, the clow clowns and cows are seem preoccupied enough with their fighting. They haven't noticed you, at least not yet. Look around. Okay. <laughs> Gary is hiding over here. Hello! Wow, such a place of craziness. Yeah, no kidding. Why are cows fighting the white face mans? Well, it's complicated. Why? Ooh. Hmm. 
Hmm? Can I fight him? Just crawled. <laughs> you don't see a thing. What? Wait. As you approach a clown and weird cow leather ghost thing, they take notice of you and stop fighting while they process this new development. The clown unfortunately seems to decide he hates cows more than he hates you. The cow unfortunately decides it hates you more. Hate it right back. Oh. Okay. Ah! Cool, the clown's on our side for this one. Victory! You beat the cow, but the enemy of your enemy is apparently not your friend because the clown decides it's his turn to be on the right side of the screen. <laughs> Bud donk. Could have been your friend. It's one clown and one cow down. You hear a lot more fighting going on in the rest of the tannery, though, so that pat on the back will have to wait till later. Go to exploring. I went in this. Found an old, uh, old toolbox. Leather shears! Looks like you found an old, old toolbox. Besides the malicious, uh, miscellaneous scraps and junk that's naturally accumulated in toolboxes, you find a handful of nails and a pair of sizable, sharp, serious looking scissors. Heavy duty scissors have serrated teeth and are designed specifically for cutting cowhide. Wonder if I can use that. Not that. Also, what's my... 13. Mm -hmm. Wait, set enemy on fire for 5 extra damage. Oh, that has moxie. Okay. Straight from the left, maybe? Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, alright, I can't get over here. Your attempt to sneak up on the cow fails, assuming you were even sneaking and not just moseying over. <laughs> Cow and, uh, cows appear all too willing to add your face list of faces they hate and turn their attention from the clowns who jump on this opportunity to get the jump on their ancient enemies. Join the fracas! To the other side. A uh, bonk. <laughs> <laughs> the weird clown noises. True to form, the clowns who were on your side in the fight betray you. Damn clowns. Bonk. Yeah, stood no chance. Feel strange. It kind of feels strange to be fighting alongside the demonic cows, but I guess war makes strange bedfellows. Ugh, please, please ignore the fact that I use clown demonic clowns and bedfellows in the same sentence. Back to explore. Oh, who is the b bone head guy? Uh, that's Buffalo, 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 Buffalo Bill. Yes, uh, I think it's three buffalo- Buffalo, 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 Bill. Yes, I think it's three buffaloes. I, uh, created him. Yes. I created him with human bones and buffalo bones and, like, a magic, uh, necromancy shit. And he, uh, he is now alive and he is here. And, uh, he helps me out sometimes. He's real cool. Scene has the makings of a real brawl. Not only does one of the clowns have a nasty look in his eye, nastier than typical, I mean, but one of the possessed cowhides is stretched on a tanning frame, which makes it stronger somehow, I assume? <laughs> That's what I was like. It's, it seems probably stronger. Do I get anything from here? Why am I I want to get, I want to get, uh, Shroom Grow for Gary. Bring on the brawl! Bonk. <laughs> Okay, uh... An ungolith. Skin cow. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Kablonk. Yeah, this guy's my buddy. Buffalo, buffalo, buffalo bill. 
the hide moisturize me. Yes, yes, yes. Moisturize me. Guess what? The clouds turn on you after the clouds are all dead. This is not surprising. <laughs> Bonk. Bonk. Also, he's so fast. Yeah, Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo Bill. He's pretty tough. He's pretty tough-alo. <laughs> With... You can't do anything. You win or miss that fight was, and win or miss the floor is afterwards. At least now you're free to poke around the scenery. Take the nasty clown's knife and- Oh look! It ha he also- they also had a key. Okay. Vermin skin and knife. Okay. Tannery. Key that locks the back doors to Danny's tannery. Oh, that makes me think of Denny's. Bunny must have been laying here since the cows came home. There isn't much left of him. Search. Bunny must have been- Okay. Poke around the tattered shreds of his clothes and find an old key. Tannery. St. Ridge key. St. Rage. Like, the church place? St. Rage. <laughs> Build the crate! And so, and the crate, open it up. Bar of soap, ranch punch. I still love that that's possible to do. Wait, uh, can I get, no. Hmm. Bones. Moisturize me. That's my throat. <laughs> Door is uh, locked. The key you found on the clown looks like it'll probably fit. If you're sure you want to go out there, it sounds like one hell of a fighting I is happening. Okay, one moment. I wanna I wanna double check if uh, if the circus will still be there. Circus. It seems like it will be there. Okay. Yep. They're here for the cows and the cows are by no means gone after this. All right. Oh, okay. Oh boy, oh geez, this is not a good situation to be in. You quickly hide behind one of old tan hides, huh? Is this why they are called that? Hides. <laughs> Three clowns out here, each armed with a nasty looking knife. One of them is licking his knife, and the sound makes you think maybe he is literally sharpening the blade on his tongue. <laughs> They're facing down two of these stretched hide cows and a monstrous thing that looks like an entire cow skeleton draped in uh, filleted cow skin. Listen in. I bet you lot think you're real clever breaking through to the human plane. Did you think we wouldn't follow you? Moo. Did you think you'd find a weapon here to use against us? Or are you just trying to escape? Moo. What? Take that back. Stop listening. None of them seem to have noticed you. It looks like you could sneak back through a door if you're really careful. Okay. Gary, what do you think? Hmm. This fighting too looking very dangerous. Careful being. Yes, yes. Ouch, tongue. <laughs> Quietly sneak up to the door. Thankfully, the crazed monsters out here are more pressing concerns than single human snooping around. Well, I am stupid, so... When they see you, the clowns and hounds and cows stop hissing and mooing and posturing each other. Hey, who the hell are you? Uh, Candygram? Moo. Uh-oh. Now's your chance. Get him. Uh-oh. Get the jump on him. Boop. Boof. A powerful cow. Okay, if this guy's powerful, I'll just make him. Bunk! Not super powerful, though. I'm pretty tough. Like Gary there. Ew. Bonk. Victory! As predictable as ever, the clowns turn on you once you've helped them defeat the cows. Sigh. <laughs> A bunk. And let's scary food this dude. <laughs> Stop giggling! Okay, bunk. Easy. 
Oh, it's a good thing the clowns hate cows more than they hate humans, or a fight would have gone way worse. Fortunately, it seems pretty unlikely that you'll run into any more animated leather-clad cow skeletons on your adventure. Right? Hooray. <laughs> As you approach the high-eyed warily, it looks like it was too tan to be possessed. This must be a storage shed. It's locked, but maybe the key found could open it. Oh! Oh. Hello. This guy back here hiding behind a barrel isn't very good at hiding. Hooray for prizes! Thanks for us! Yes. Uh. Hello? Oh, thank God you aren't one of those horrible cows! Uh, nope. I'm Olga. Olga Buttermuffin. I'm Gr Grady Tanner. It's a good thing you arrived. I couldn't have held out for much longer. Actually, Tanner, is that your surname? Uh, Berth! Uh, what are you doing here? Hiding! What I mean is, why are you hiding in, in here? Because I don't want to die. Look, what's your story? Well, I was scavenging for tanning materials. Cow's bane ain't as easy to, to get a hold of as it, is, as it was in the day. But while I was searching, these cows showed up, and then the O's clown showed up, so I locked myself in here to hide. It was Klaus, Klaus Blade. How long have you been in here? What's Cow's Bane? It's a herb used for tan and leather. You can't grow it in large batches anymore, but Cow's Cows showed up and wrecked this place. So there's other stuff we generally use for pig, le uh, use for pig leather and so on. It's not good enough. Uh, good, though. And not as good, though. Cows wreck your herb gardens? Yeah, if you're growing more than about a flower pot's worth, they'll get wind of it somehow. Hate the stuff. Can't figure out why. Here. <laughs> Here, I got extra seeds you can have. Be careful with them. Packet of cow's bane seeds. So much call for them in the past, but nowadays they're dear. Birth? Both? The kickles. <laughs> Birth? How long have you been in here? I wonder where I plant those. Three or four days. I'm starving. Cow's bane's poisonous, so I've been chewing on this old leather hat for its sustenance. Seriously? Yep. Want some? No. Well, I took care of the clowns and the cows. So consider yourself rescued. Wonderful. As soon as I get a new shop set up, I can count, uh, count on me for any leather goods you need. First one's on the house. Uh, would you happen to know where I'm at? Set up a new shop? Where, you wouldn't know how to set up a new shop, would you? Would your old shop, uh... Care to guess? Cows? Yep. Empty a lot and your water you could probably use. Great, I'll head right there. Thanks a million, partner. I owe you one. No problem. Your face is stuck angry? It's a crate. Open it up. Pressed rancher. Mm. Is it still angry? Forever angry? I'm angry. Woo! Okay, to fighting those and still alive. Nice. Oh. <sighs> Gonna go back to dirt water real quick. <laughs> oh, hello, cactus dude. I have not found a cactus lady. Found a ghost cactus. Why do horses have so many legs? Um, because going through a lot of emotions, still thinking about ghost wood. <laughs> Gonna afford the hell out of it. All right. Uh, curiosity and bean. Fine leather and goods. Okay. Oh, pants. Well, hey there, Olga. Welcome to my shop. Looks like you got yourself set up pretty nicely. Sure have. Here, let me give you a little something. Thanks for helping me out. I have a sharp uh, sharpening strop on the house. Sharpening strop? Increases the damage your wheelie, mealy, wheelie, mealy weapon by three to four. With one of these, a little elbow grease and a little imagination. Anything can be sharpened. Oh. Oh, thanks. Just know if you need anything else I can do for you. Show me the goods. That's how I sharpen the bone? Okay. Fine, Vendular. I can buy another one of those. 
Anything can be sharpened. Eh. Item goes in your light bulb. Flexible chaps, inflexible chaps. <laughs> okay, um. Good the job. I don't need the clown knife. Hmm. I think I already know how to lock pick, don't I? So where have that book for? Where is it? Locks and how to pick them. Where is it? There we go. Yeah, I have already. Take my lock picking book. I need the meat. Spirilla with different things. Yeah, I could sharpen my uh, cactus club. It's a pretty good cactus club. Kind of want to wait a little bit though. Oh, hello. Oh, a very amusing. Uh, Chronosity occurred. You noticed the tanner that moved in next door to me? Well, the same day he arrived, I acquired a spool of magic amplifying thread. If you were to embroider some pants with it, the results would be quite powerful. Care to see it? Interesting. Glimmering thread. Oh, that's five st spell damage to pants. You have inconspicuousness. <laughs> All right. Do I have anything here? Nope. I'd like to send a parts card. Oh yeah, I have already. Let's see here. Oh! No, I don't wanna... No. No. Okay. Boon the calm. Bobcat. Okay, uh. <laughs> okay, um. Circus! Gosh, I'm so hungry right now. You've been wearing your poop filled pants for so long. My very soiled one. Reach for the sky, clown! You quickly turn around and see the grizzled-looking man in all black clothes, except for his hat, which is white with brightly colored spots. He's pointed gun at you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No way in hell I'm a clown! You need to get your eyes checked, bud! Man strides up to you, unfavorably cl uh, uncomfortably close, and inspects your face. Hmm, seems I was mistaken. Be on your way. Hold on a second. Your hat... Is that a clown skin hat? Man looks surprised. You know about the clowns. You know the truth. Wish I didn't. Knowledge may protect you. Walk safe, traveler. Clown hunter turns to leave. Er, you too. Bye. I wanted his hat. This is who I was talking about. Didn't have high enough up foxing. Hopefully I can see him again. Oh, you see you need a foxing for that. Wait a moment. Can I? I think I can buy a foxing book. If I have enough meat at the trading post, how much meat do I have? Okay, I have that much. Uh, let me see where I get out foxing.
trading post. I'm gonna... Redwood trading post. I want to see if they have that. So hungry. Mind your meat. It doesn't look like it does have out fox in there, so I just don't have on fox in. <sighs> Let's tend to go inside. As you enter the circus, the ticket booth clown shout, Welcome to Barney Boo Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow, ma'am, in a loud and enthusiastic voice. Enter the circus. You- the music. You walk into a circus. Actually, I it guess it's more of a carnival, but it's not split hairs. As nonchalantly as possible. There's a bunch of clowns around, looking at the booths and so on. More clowns than customers, of which there don't seem to be more than a dozen or so. Which is good, in that it means the clowns can't disappear, uh, disappear you as easily as if, if they figure out what you know. But on the other hand, if things go wrong, here's innocent bystanders might get caught in the crossfire. Got it. Merry go round has a dirty canvas striped over it. Read the sign. The sign says condemned until further noticed. We encourage anyone suffering from horse, horse bites to consult a doctor. It's your partner! Very many white faced, sharp teeth, not mans to, unco uh, to being uncomfortable. Stay here and watch the exhale. Snoop around a bit. Sideshow. Hot food, cold drinks, trepid candy. The clown here selling rubber toy balloons. You notice that he's watching you and then he notices that you've noticed. And he smiles and wiggles the balloons at you enticingly. Talk to the clown. Howdy there, miss. Interest in a toy balloon? How much are they? What colors do you have? How do you make them float like that? Why well, nothing to it? Heck, they all, <laughs> they all float around here. Oh, <laughs> of course. What colors do you have? Oh, uh -huh, well, let's just take a look. Um, red. They're all red. How much are they? For you? Just 30 meat. Take one. Yeah. Alrighty then. Here you go. You got a balloon. It's red. Anything else I can do for you? Can tell me more about the circus? It's really more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. Oh, what should, would you like to know? What are your traveling fans? Why is everyone working here? A clown? Okay. Haven't decided yet. That's why we said... We, why we sit down somewhere a bit more rural, keep things relatively quiet. We'll be we scattered around, lay land and all. Hoo -hoo. Where'd you travel from? What was your previous stop? Uh, was your previous stop interesting? Oh, northwestish. It was a little hole in the ground kind of place. You wouldn't have heard of it. No. <laughs> uh. Why is everyone working here, clown? Oh, it's traditional when the. What do you call them? Rodeo stopped being put on. The rodeo clowns took other jobs at the circuses, carnivals. Over the years, it just became a normal thing for carnies and to be clowns. It's a community, you might say. <laughs> Who's part of the Bob guy? Oh, the boss is a real famous showman. Though I'm not surprised you wouldn't have heard of him around here. <laughs> Got an eye like a hawk. He's a real whiz with those knobs of his. Don't miss the show. It's a real highlight of the carnival. See you around, clown. Catch you later, alligator. Wonder off. Uh, cotton candy. Cotton candy calls the clown behind his food stand and then makes a foot noise with the slide whistle. Come try this. Just a vintage confectionery delight. Talk to the winder. The winder. A uh, clown blows his side whistle again as you approach. Foop! Step right up, miss. Step up and try one of the world's newest candy sensations. What is it? Cotton candy, the finest in several cents of the world. Word. Spun sugar created through a revolutionary new process. It's so light and sweet and fluffy, it's like eating butterfly dreams and getting wishes. Foop! So it's actually made of cotton? So it isn't actually made of cotton? What? No cotton is... Uh, what? No, cotton is indigestible no matter how much chocolate you cover it with. Found out the hard way, didn't you? Foo! <laughs> how did you make it? 
Got some little boxes with a wide funnel coming out of the top. Little machine right here. Can't tell you how, how much how it works. <laughs> much as I like to brag, it's a trade secret. You invent it? Not as much. Couple dentists down south were the first one. Dentists, go figure. <laughs> but after hearing about it, I managed to figure out how it works. Made a few improvements with my design too. And I'm really curious. Don't worry, miss. The secrets in the box are for nope. We're sorry, miss. These secrets in the box are for nobody's eyes but my own. Foo! I'll be happy to sell you some cotton candy, though. How much does it cost? 300 meat. Foo! That's a lot, but okay. 300 meat. Foo! Mm. Actually, I want some. Con puts his slide whistle down on the counter, ducks underneath it, and comes up with a paper con, which he holds on the, uh, in the mouth of the metal box. Pulls down a lever, and the machine makes a thin squealing sound as glittering white it's spun sugar collects on the paper con in a fluffy cloud. Here you go! Enjoy! Foo! <laughs> Cotton candy. Just plain old sugar. Tastes better on a stick. Increase the speed by three for the rest of the day. Ooh, speed. Cold drinks, called Saka, and climb behind his food stand. Cold, ice cold sarsaparilla in bottles. Howdy, yeah, ma'am. Can you treat yourself to an ice cold soft drink? You said they're selling them in. You're selling them in bottles. That's right. Newfangled crown cork bottle caps and all. What kind do you have? Got root beer, ginger beer, and sarsaparilla. Uh, how about orange cream? Nope. How about lemonade? Nope. What about grapefruit? Nope. Uh, what kinds do you have again? <laughs> Got to, root beer, ginger beer, and sarsaparilla. Make uh, diet sizzleberry? Nope. Rhubarb? Nope. Orange cream? Nope. Lemon lime? Nope. Celery? Nope. Black cherry? Nope. Key lime? Nope. Orange cream? Nope. Cherry? Nope. <laughs> uh, make the drinks yourself. If you're asking if we got a wagon dedicated to brewing and bottling three different kinds of sodas in our traveling carnival, no, we stocked up as we passed through large towns. How much are they? Uh, 250? It's for the deposit on the bottle. Okay, I'll take one. Ooh, ginger beer, root beer, root beer. Here you go, enjoy. Chris is your mysticality. Ah! This disappointing thing about the set of things you have. <coughs> me. It's better root beer. The least disappointing thing out of a set of things that have the word beer in them but aren't beer. <laughs> Thanks. Customer service. That clown must have. Bless you. Thank you. Red Hots clouds the can calls the clown behind, clown behind the food stand. Red Hots, foot longs, two kinds of mustard. There's a small sign that says lost and found. Talk to the vendor. Cloud grins, gestures at a, lar a, a little charcoal grill behind him. Howdy, ma'am. I interest you in a foot-long sausage. Uh... Where are they made of? What do you mean? They're pork. What else do you make sausage out of? Regular pork or long pork? Ground gives you a long, chilly look. I'm sure I don't know what you're implying, ma'am. Uh, that's scary. Are they actually foot-long? 12 inches? Because a lot of guys say that, but oh my goodness. Just gotta stop you right there seeing this. There's ladies and children present. You won't want or not. <laughs> wink wonk. What are they made of? How much are they? It's your choice of condiment. What are the condiments? Onions, pickle, relish, three kinds of mustard, two kinds of ketchup. Whoa! What kind of mustard? Yellow, brown, blue? Blue mustard? Looks like I'm all out of blue. Sorry. <laughs> Kinds of ketchup. Got ketchup and catsup. Oh, there's a lot to do there. Um, I'd like to see the last and found. Sure thing. What'd you lose? Eh, well, nothing. What? You, what? You just figured you'd see if I had anything you lacked? But there's no such thing as an honest thief. Gotta pick one or the other. <laughs> okay. Uh, how much are they? I'll take one. Uh, help yourself to clown sausage. 
A large pork sausage with a choice of condiments, except he was all out of the blue mustard. Increases your moxie by three for the rest of the day. Thanks. But I didn't actually get to choose. Mm. It's so expensive here. Just like at a real carnival. What is this? This clown is presumably selling tickets to the sideshow. Talk to him. Howdy, Mus. Can I interest you in the wondrous mystery? Ethereus delights the sideshow. What do you all have in there? Secrets, mysteries, things too weird and disturbing to be witnessed by the, uh, the light of day. Freaks? Not nah, just freaks. Gosh, how much does it cost? For you, 300 meat. For everyone else, 300 meat. Okay, I'm in. You'd be disappointed if, in the event that you are. In the event you are disappointed, no refunds. It takes your meat and stamps your hand. There you go, enjoy. What's over here? Main stage, test your aim, test your mind, test your might. Clown, they're selling rubber toy balloons. Wait, or is it the same clown as before? He looks identical. Is he following, following, following you around? How do you miss anything I can do for, else for I can do for you? Right on the other side of the midway just now? Haha, <laughs> nope, that's just the other balloon guy. We just dress alike and use the same face paint. Did we fool you? What else can I do for you? He grins and gives you an exaggerated wink. I see. You know, I'm good. Hi, child. Kid here searching around with a sad look on his face. Talk to him. You okay, kid? Did you lose your parents? I lost my lucky bottle cap. Haven't seen it, have you, madam? No, but I'll keep an eye out. What's it look like? It's shiny steel and it's on a little chain. Okay, I'll let you know if I find it. Lost and found, lost and found, lost and found, lost and found. It's way too egress. No. Lip. Sure thing, what'd you lose? A uh, lucky bottle cap. The clown pulls out a wooden box from under a counter and looks inside. Pierce, you're in luck. This one yours? He pull <laughs> He put pulls the uh, he puts the box on the counter for you to see and turns back to his grill for a moment. Look inside. Box contains shiny ball cap with a metal chain, holding pocket mic, silk handkerchief, bottle of smelling salts. Yeah, that's the one. Thanks. No problem, ma'am. Handkerchief. Pretty sure you look. This one yours. He popped out the buy counter for you to see. Get the hanky. No problem. Hopefully the previous owner of this does not appear to have gotten any use out of it. Okay, uh, I want to get all this stuff because I'm greedy. Lost and found. Yes, I lost my pocket knife. Mm-hmm. Pocket knife, thanks. You're no problem. Folding pocket knife like this one isn't going to be useful as a weapon, but you never know when it might come in handy for something else. Plus, it was free. Okay, lost and found. I lost smelling salts. Yes. Bottle of foul smelling ammonia crystals designed to uh, disgust people into being more awake. Okay. Alright. Nice freaky show. Wink, 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 wink. Alright. Let me see over here. I wanted to do the test your strength because I'm strunk. Appears to be one of those test your strength games where you have to use a big camera to ring a bell. Take a closer look. Well, howdy there, miss. You look like you got a good arm on you. Here's a game right up your alley. What's the game? As simple as can be, take this big mallet here and hit the lever on the bell. Ring the bell and you win. Uh, what's the prize? Take the Barney Boo Bob stage show, which is otherwise sold out. So it's a rare catch, my friend. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Contacts your meat and puts a big ma mallet on the counter. Good luck. Hit it not very hard. Hit it kind of hard. Hit it very hard. Hit it extremely hard. Made a ding. You pick up the mallet, toss it end over end, and catch it a couple of times to test its weight. Casual uh, and casually slam it onto the lever. Ding! Well, I'll be! That's some genuine muscle you got on you, girl. Looks like you're a winner. Circus show tickets. Mit one Barnaby Bob's astonishing demonstration of per perspective and skill. Show will be starting soon. Don't miss it. Thanks. 
perfectly silly walk for someone to test your strength. <laughs> Well, if it's just the same things, boo. Do, 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 do. Sideshow. Sideshow tent is fairly large and packed with weird things to look at, like all good sideshows are. A few lanterns are hanging over on the ceiling, casting flickering shadows around and making everything look more, even more eerie. Clown is hanging out in here, presumably to keep an eye on the exhibits. He grins and nods as you enter. Come on in, take your time. Have a good look. Uh, have a good look around. Just remember, no touching. Look around. Uh it used to be one of those weird bent mirrors that make you look all crazy. As if it was enough looking- If there is- if there wasn't enough crazy looking stuff around here already. Look at yourself. God, this mirror somehow shows you, um, what you'd look like in clown makeup. Bloodshot eyes stare back at you from a pasty white face painted with an odd pattern of red triangles. Flickering lantern light, it almost looks like she winks at you. Brr. Mirror makes you look really stretched out and thin. Your limbs ends twist and writhe like snakes as you move around. It's a bit unsettling and your muscles ache a little sympathetically. Think you can get normal carnival prizes for doing the games again? Well, I asked what it was and it just said uh, it was another ticket, so. See, so one of those weird, okay. Flexion in the mirror is short and squash looking, folded up like an accordion. You spend a moment moving back and forth in front of the mirror, seeing how the image changes. It's kind of amusing. Based on its attitude, uniquely combining uh, tentives and extreme boredom, you assume the clown's job is to keep an eye on the sideshow exhibits. Talk to him. Howdy, miss. Welcome to the sideshow. Thanks. What's to see here? Well, down to the left, we have our collection of spooky warped mirrors. Right here, we have an exhibit of clown eggs and pickled punks. Further down to the right is our freak show. Feel free to explore, and I'll be here if you got any questions. That's a good question. What's with the weird mirrors? Ain't they a riot? That's what we call them optical illusion, as I understand it. Has to do with the way light reflects off them. I'm 100% sure that I saw, what I saw can't be explained by the reflection of light. <laughs> no telling what you might see if you took if you look too long. Uh huh. Shelves are displaying a large collection of strangely painted eggs. Have a closer look. You see several shelves full of white eggs, each one painted with a unique pattern of colorful shapes. A small plus card printed pin pinned to one of the shelves says, Clown Eggs. In the circus community, it's tradition for each clown to paint their chosen makeup pattern onto an egg shell. These clown eggs are archived, uh, archived for future reference to ensure that no one chooses a pattern that has already been used. It is considered extremely taboo to wear another clown's face. These must, must be the eggs for the clowns that work in the circus. You recognize a few of them, like the clowns uh, that, like the clown here in the sideshow tent, and the ticket seller clown out front. Hey, wait a minute! There, here's an egg for the balloon selling clown. Didn't he tell you there's uh didn't he tell you there's an art guy wearing the same makeup? According to the sign, it seems unlikely. This is true. Let's pick the eggs more closely. Hey, step back, please. No touching. Sorry, use the shelf. Um I hmm. shelves are filled with jars and the jars are filled with things. Weird looking real weird looking things. Look closer. You lean in a little closer and expect, inspect the jars. They mostly contain malformed and or mutilate, uh, mu mutated animals pickled in formaldehyde. A three-headed kitten, some kind of ferret or weasel with eight legs, a twisted, amorphous loop of a snake without a head or tail, weird crazy stuff. One shelf seems devoted to huge, gross, pale grubs like fat, featureless white worms the size of a sweet potato. The one on the end is larger than the others and has shiny black eyes. Someone is, uh, someone has painted its face with an apparent parody of clown makeup. Yuck. Take a closer look. The pasty white face has been painted with little blue triangles over and under the eyes. The creature has a long, thin slash of a mouth as well. The area around it has been painted with bright red lipstick. 
The black eyes flash red as the thing suddenly thrashes in its jar, spinning to face you and stretching its mouth open, revealing rows of yellow shark teeth. You stumble back with a cry of shock. Gah! Ah ha ha! Got you pretty good there, Missy. W what would the what was that? <laughs> it ain't a real critter. It's made of rubber and clay and doll parts and such. Got an electromagnet under the shelf to move it with. Takes a little push button gizmo out of his pocket to show you. Should have seen your face. You about jumped right out of your boots. <laughs> Ugh. Clown baby. Ugh. Guy is staring. Uh, this guy is a startling sight, even for a circus freak show. His entire head is one enormous eyeball. As you look him over, he stares back at you. Not that he's got much of a choice. Talk to him. Er, hello, I'm Olga. How's it going? Can you talk? Guess not. Do you blink? Or wink, I guess? Guess not. So, uh, this, this circus gig, do you like it? His hands slowly curl into fists and, and the knuckles turn white with tension. Er, I see your... understand, I mean. Uh, take a closer look at him. You move a little to the side and lean over the rope to get a closer look at the guy. He's basically just what he seems to be at first glance. A guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things, though. First, he has an odd lump at the, well, what would you call the... The base of his skull, if he had one. So a sort of crumpled, fleshy mass the size of a fist. With a squint and some imagination, it almost looks like the crushed and shriveled vestibule remains of a human head. Oh. Second thing you notice is that his ankles are locked to the legs of his stool, and the legs of his stool are bolted to the floor. Okay, I'll see you around. Call him whatever. Poor guy, yeah. Uh, were you born that way? No. Sorry, I guess that was a pretty personal question. <laughs> How's it hanging? Just like... Mm. Wub. What's that noise? Man is neatly dressed, though his suit is a bis uh, threadbare and out of fashion. He's smoking a pipe and leaping through a magazine. When you stop to look at him, he nods amusedly. Hello there, welcome to the sideshow. My name is Douglas. Uh, hi, I'm Olga. Delighted to see you. So, uh, well... You are perhaps trying to think of a polite way to ask what's wrong with me. Uh, yeah, you got me. Don't worry, Olga. I am in the sideshow, after all. It's an obvious uh, and uh, natural question. Wait a minute. You said the last bit without moving your lips. Are, are you a ventriloquist? Not at all. Uh, not at all. Let me... Uh, allow me to demonstrate. He stands up and turns around. His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored with two front sides, and he is in our face on the back of his head, with his hair cut and parted uh, appropriately. Ta-da! As he sits back down, his knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Uh, uh. Douglas winces slightly, though certainly not as much as you'd expect. Oh dear! What in the... Surprising, yes? A uh, bit, yeah. How is that even possible? Douglas shrugs and holds his pipe up to a now back of his head so the our face can take a puff. Are you, what's the phrase, Siamese twins? Not exactly. It's difficult to describe, I'm afraid. Uh, two minds in one body with two faces? Being closer to the truth, uh, truth to say two instances of the same mind. Uh, with, as you say, two faces. You're right. Uh, that doesn't make any sense at all. The other face chuckles and Douglas holds his magazine behind his back. Took some getting used to. That much is quite certain. Um, were you born like this? I... We'd rather not discuss how I came to be this way, if you don't mind. Okay, sorry. Uh, no apology necessary. Your knees must be a wreck. Surgery was necessary to permit them to bend in both directions. It sounds worse than it feels, I assure you. Why are you in the sideshow? 
with a regular suit and haircut, you could easily pass for normal. I have a contract. Out of the corner of your eye, you spotted a clown making a gesture, but you didn't catch what it was. Douglas clears his throat. Uh, b plus, it's quite the life, you know. Free room and board. Tr travel the world. And you see such interesting people. He's, haha, <laughs> two-faced. <laughs> Talk to you later, Douglas. Can I help you in any way? Hi, Douglas. Hello again, what can I do for you? Uh, okay. Let's see what this... This is so grindy. It's a lady here with her head sticking out of a hole in a large metal box. She nods politely at you. Er... Hello. Hello, are you enjoying the, the carnival? Well, it's interesting. She smiles slightly. Yep, I'm sure it is. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you something? Certainly. What's your name? I'm Janet. And you? Uh, er... Olga, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Olga. Why are you in a box? It's a rather personal question, isn't it? Oh, sorry. I'm only teasing, dear. Would you like to see inside? I'm scared, but okay. Janet wh whistles to signal the clown and he moses over. He unlocks a door on the front of the box and throws it open with a theoret uh, theoretical flourish. Inside, instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, complicated assortment of glass tubes and pipes, ticking clockwork gears and pumps, liquids of various colors, mostly red, slash through the tubes. Large bellows near the top inflates, then begins to slowly deflate. What do you think? Some kind of trick, right? Folded up behind a mirror in there or something, right? No trick! Clown chuckles and walks around the back of the box, bends a hatch and waves you oh, through it, then saunters back its place behind the, by the shelves. Uh, that's horrifying and amazing. Never seen anything like it. I'll take that as a compliment. It's certainly educational, I imagine. Large chunk on the left is my stomach. If you'd like to see what I had for lunch today, I, how did this happen? Were you in some kind of terrible accident? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about that. Of course, sorry, it must be a painful memory. Uh, she, her calmly composed face creases into a slight grimace as she scoots, uh, sh shoots a long side glance at the clown. Yes. Well, it's nice to meet you. So long. Uh, I wonder. It's horrifying. Oh. All palms are keeping Janet's head alive. Ask you a question. Uh, how are you feeling? Referring to my condition, don't worry, I've grown accustomed to it more or less. Uh, examine her workings. As you watch the various liquids swoosh around in their tanks and pipes for a minute, weird, gross, but it is indeed educational. Anatomical learning. Plus three melee damage. You know what makes a human being tick and how to stop one from ticking. Come to that. Uh,. Nice to, it's nice to meet you, Janet. So long. Good luck, Olga. That's pretty. These poor people. Yeah, sound effect. Huh. Ask a question. Aww. These people. You mean the freaks? Ain't they a scream? The one in the giant eyeball hits my favorite. Qu nice quiet fella. Uh-huh. If you have a question about the other two, feel free, free, free to ask them personally. I wouldn't want to be telling tales out of school, since the guy, I guy can't uh, talk, though. You can ask me about him if you want. Okay, can you tell me about him? Not much, I'm afraid, to be honest. He joined us, oh, about a year ago. Maybe a little less. Where did he come from? No idea. Wait, weird, ain't it? You'd think a uh, fellow looks... So no idea where to hit it, you'd think. A fellow looks like that, you'd read about him in the papers, right? Well, yeah. It sure is mysterious. How did he get like that? Couldn't tell you. I bet you've got a theory at least. <laughs> well, maybe he saw something no human fellow should ever see. Why is he locked to his chair? Ah, you noticed that, did ya? Real shame that is. Fellow's a bit unpredictable. 
has a violent spell once in a while. Gosh, don't worry none, I'm keeping an eye on him. <laughs> Does he ever blink? You mean, wink? <laughs> nope, no eyelids. I've gotta to toss a bucket of water over him once in a while so he's, uh, so as he don't get too dry. He does look a bit dry now that you mention it. <laughs> well, it's getting about that time. Excuse me for a minute. Sure. Oh. Now's your chance, Owl. Since the clown's distracted, you take the opportunity to get a closer look at the eggs. You notice two things about them. Firstly, they're too large to be chicken eggs. You have no idea what kind of eggs they are. Secondly, they've all been broken and then very meticulously glued back together. They almost look like they've been reassembled after something hatched out of them. The clowns! You quickly step back as the cloud clown returns. Gives you a fair amount of side eye, but doesn't say anything. Here's the shell. All of it? Oh. Okay. Can you tell me about the eggs? Traditional cloud things, and there's a place guard next to you and explains the detail. Don't get too close, please. They're fragile. Things in jars. It's what we call, uh, we in a business call pickled punks. A menagerie of strange and twisted creatures such, such as you've never seen before. The lack captured and preserved on display for your uh, entertainment and edification. That's how the boss says it. Are they real? As real as they come. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You lean in closer to inspect the gross thing. Despite what the clown said, it certainly looks real. Whoever made it did an excellent and disgusting job. Peeking uh, certain dubiously under shelf, you don't see any ev evidence of an electromagnet or other such device. You look in the mirror again and see your limbs stretched out like taffy, twisting around like the tentacles of an octopus. You can hear your joints creaking and your muscles feel like they've gone through a ringer. Gain the effect sore. Yikes! Ow! You look in the mirror again and the clown near you is still there, staring. Very slowly her mouth opens into a wide grin, revealing multiple rows of yellow, pointed, shark-like teeth. Not wanting to keep your ape looking, but unwilling to turn your back on it, you slowly slide, sidle away until it's no longer visible. Sawing hard, you approach the mirror again. It's empty. Not only is the clown you gone, but you don't show a reflection at all. Mm. Ouch, though. Mm. Uh. Okay, let me see if I can talk to the others here now. I know he's like over here, but uh, let's talk to her. Can I ask you a question? Uh, how are you feeling? How did this happen?
Yeah, uh, were you born like this? Uh, I don't think I can do anything else. And I have the stupid sore thing, so I have 10 less HP. Um... I think I should sleep through a night. Six minutes? You can't do anything while the guard's there? How do I get rid of him? Do you have the ticket to the main show? Uh, I feel like the main show is gonna be a fight. Oh, I forgot to return this. Yes! No problem, kid. Hello again, ma'am. Say, that's a real nice balloon. You want to trade? We'll give you a lucky battle cap for it. Okay. Here you go. Lucky bottle cap. Presumably this belongs to a kid, because you can't imagine there's more than one person around who would be so into a bottle cap that they'd hang it on a keychain. Kid runs off with his new balloon. Got rid of him by pointing out the eyeball guy needs water. Yeah, but I can't, uh... Um... Yeah, I can't help the other two. You streamed for two hours, or do you feel okay for three? Um... I'll stream for two and a half, probably. Or maybe I'll- actually I'll end soon. Earlier you told me there's another clown with the same face paint. That's right, the other balloon seller. Except I look at the clown eggs display on the sideshow. There's only one egg with that pla pat pattern and it's supposedly taboo for a clown to use in our clown's makeup. Say, you're real sharp. Better watch out you don't cut yourself, ho oh, ho. So what's the deal? You're right, there's just me. I walk around the midway and sell balloons at both ends. Then people ask, I like to have a little fun with them. So you're not actually following me around? Ho oh, ho, why would I need to eat? Why would I need to do that? You aren't dangerous or anything, right? Alright. Anything else I can do for you? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be low on health, even if uh, I'm probably over leveled for it. And I need to do that. Oh, okay. Creek bed. Yes. Nice. And I need to, um, do. What's the word I'm looking for? Oh. Run all over there. I need to fudge. Oh, that didn't mean to do that. It's binoculars. Okay. I need to get asleep the night so then, um. Oh. I can get the permit. You go to sleep. You dream that you're playing baseball with a red suited dwarf. 
while fleeing from a huge rock. After that, you get in a fist fight with an angry bear. You wake up screaming. Well, okay then. You wake up refreshed and restored and hungry and sober. Let's mosey. Day four. I think I needed to wait two days. I don't know. Oh, let's see. Nope. Let's eat that. Uh, eat the old candy and it makes you sad because you prefer new candy. <laughs> okay. Um, that's good. Yes. Okay. And... Oh. I'll leave that for now. I hate it when it's necessary to end a day. Yeah, because it's, it's like, I'd like to be able to do it all in one day. I mean, it's not actually one day, but you know. <sighs> Alright, let me see. I'm gonna check these, I think. No, wait, and the complicated punch cards. Alright. Wait a moment. I can't... Is your pants so poopy? I think that's the necessary questions. <laughs> I fell off a cart. A little TD stenciled on the side. Seems spit on the nose, but hey, free stuff is free stuff. Okay. Uh... Not that button. The smoldering leather pants. They're on fire. Calm is mean. Give him an apple. What? Greedy devours the apple and twitches gratefully. Friend of horses! You really like horses and horses really like you. It really makes the horse inside of you shine out. Plus one to speed. Yes! Give him an apple. Yes. Yes! I have befriended the horses. I am fast. Fast. Yeehaw! Okay. I think I pretty much explored everything. I can't free anyone. Let's try that. Garage! I don't think it's. Garage, cream corn. Wait. Screamly muscular clown seems to be guarding the entrance to some sort of stage. Doesn't seem why you go in there. Talk to him. Clown crosses his arms and arms and grunts when you approach. Dick it, please. Dick it for what? Barnaby Bob stunt spectacular. What's that? The boss does a show. Yes? Yeah. What kind of show? Naff tricks, mostly. Here's my ticket. Okay. Go on in. The show will start soon. He enters the stage area. Alright, alright. Benches must be for the audience. Well, same muscular clown that was guarding the entrance to the stage area early. Doesn't look like he's gonna let you backstage. Let me in! Can't go through a backstage area. The hulking clown guard won't let you. I'm blending in with the background. Okay, I'll have a seat. You take a seat, and a smattering of other patrons appear and sit down as well. After a minute or two, there's a crash of cymbals, and a clown runs in for the backstage curtain. Huh. And jumps up onto the stage. In contrast to the other clown's colorful clothing, his is relatively simple. Black wool trousers and a bright crimson shirt under a pale tan leather jacket with fringe on the sleeves. And a red heart painted on the shoulder. His face paint is plain white without any colored accents, contrasting his curly, curled black mustache and thin goatee. A snappy silk top hat, hat with a rakish tilt tops off his outfit. He doffs his hat and blo bows with a deep theoretical flourish, and the s small audience claps politely. Fool or not? Fool. Do fool? Clap. <laughs> Drink! 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and welcome to and uh, welcome one and all to Barney Boo Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow. I hope you've been enjoying the attractions and distractions of our little traveling carnival. And now it's time for our star performance, the main attraction. Ladies and gents, put your hands together for a loud drum roll starts as he gestures to the curtain and then the cymbals crash again. The clown puts his hat back on with a chuckle. Me, a Barnaby Bob! Alright. Applaud. Much obliged and much obliged. You're far too kind. Why, I haven't even shown you anything yet. With a laugh, he flips a huge bowie knife into the air. You didn't even see where he pulled it from. The knife glitters as he spin as it spins. The he catches it and flips it in the air again, this time catching and balancing it on its point on the tip of one finger. He holds that pose very still for a moment, then jerks his hand out of the way. The knife thunks into the wood of the stage floor, deep enough that he has to give... Give it a jerk from side to side before we can yank the blade free. He winks broadly to the audience. Wouldn't be any fun if it were they weren't sharp, would it, ladies and gents? Ooh. Clap. Okay. He pulls two more knives from his jacket and begins a flashy and elaborate knife juggling act. Three spinning blades somehow turn into four, and then his hat is added into the mix, floating slightly uh, through the ca lightly through the cascade of knives without a single scratch. He finishes the routine by catching two of the knives in each hand and allowing his hat to fall n all nearly to the ground, or catching it on the tip of his boot and kicking it back in the air and onto the top of his head. Applaud. Ah, oh, now, there's some applause I believe I've earned. Let me, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it took a lot of hats to get to where I am today. He chuckles and he adjusts his hat back up to its original rackish tilt. Now for the grand finale. For this, I'll need a volunteer from the audience. A few hands go up, but Ernie Bobs ignores them and looks directly at you. What about you, madam? Uh, well, uh... Didn't cut himself, though, somehow. He has, uh... He has clown skin. Okay. Good, I like a brave one. Step right up into the stage here. Your name, please? Olga Buttermuffin. It's a real pleasure to finally meet you, Olga Danger Buttermuffin. He knows my middle name. He he knows my middle name. Anime plot device happens where his clothes get cut off. <laughs> I didn't say my middle name, but he knew it. Set up, get onto the stage. A couple of clowns hold a large wooden panel about seven feet tall and four wi uh, wide onto the stage. They stand it up vertically behind you and stay there, holding it steady. Has two holes in it, slightly above wrist level, and a lot of knife marks. Waist level. Uh... Press your back flat up against the wood, please, and put your hands through the holes. Uh, you do so, the holes are just a, a fraction too high, so it's not very comfortable. Then one of the clowns pulls your arm back tighter and ties them together with the of hemp, so it becomes much more uncomfortable for a variety of reasons. Oh dear. He put up with ghost wood. <laughs> Communicates with the dead. Yeah, this is why he turned evil into an evil clown. Oh dear. Don't worry, this is to make sure you don't make, make any sudden and unexpected movements. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that, would we? Err. Fred not, miss. Everything's under control. He steps up close to you and adjusts your collar, brushes a little dust off your shoulders. My control. You know, Olga, we get sh a, a sharp customer through here from time to time. But my, you're the sharpest I've seen yet. However, I'll bet a shiny silver dollar I've got something up my sleeve that's even sharper. Hmm. His pupils narrow to vertical slits as he grins at you, revealing rows of pointed yellow shark teeth. As he turns away, you can see the heart on the shoulder of his leather jacket is drawn with an arrow through it and the word uh, aired mom. It doesn't look painted on. Uh, free your hands. You struggle a little, but your arms are too tightly bound. The rough hemp rope digs into your wrists. Barney Bob strolls to the other end, end of the stage and turns to face you. Now, now, don't worry. This will all be over soon. Just don't move. It's a hand on it. A knife in his hand again and gives a few t uh, ooh, twirls and flips. Light reflected from the blade glitters in his eyes. Then, without warning, he hurls at you. 
thunk. The knife hits the wood before you can even blink. Here's breath from your left ear. Stare him down. <laughs> Seems kinky. Uh, stare him down. Barney Bob's grins at you as a cloud of plots. Another knife appears in one hand, an apple in the other. Tosses the apple to one of the stagehands, who carefully balances on top of your head. Time for the old William Tell routine. A bit of cliche, perhaps. But there's a reason it's a classic, eh, ladies and gentlemen? Take a deep breath. The cloud watches with rapt attention as he flourishes the knife, spinning it and flipping it behind his back. Then faster than you can register, thwok! Cold apple juice dribbles under your hair and down the back of your neck. Two for two! What do you say, Olga? Shall we go for one more? Stare him down. Barney Bob pulls out another knife and gives it a quick stromping across the pale leather sleeves of his jacket, then whips a color uh, colorful spotted handkerchief from his pocket and blindfolds himself. This time his smile is much colder. I advise you to watch closely, Olga Buttermuffin, since you're the only one of us who can. Okay. We'll just watch closely. Claft the crowd laughs, but you don't really hear it. The knife spins in his hand, this time either because of the adrenaline or because he's actually moving slower. You can see the motion of his arm as he throws it. He twists his wrist in an odd way that you don't think he did before. The knife is flying at you. The knife is flying directly at your right eye. Don't move! Knife incredibly swerves at the last possible moment. Thunk! You can feel the wood shake from the force as it stabs into the board. The middle is cold against your right cheek. The audience abrupts into cheers as Bonnie Bob, Bob removes his blindfold and pumps a fist triumphantly. One of the stagehand clowns unties your wrists and help you get your arms out of the holes. Bob takes your hand and raises it into the hair, air victoriously. Well now, ain't she a good sport, folks? And as brave as a, a, a target as I've ever had. Take a bow, old good butter muffin. Telekinesis. <laughs> Take a bow. You bow to the cheering crowd, carefully keeping your eyes on Barney B. Bob. He bows as well, removing his hat in an elaborate flourish. Then he takes a slip of paper out of it. And as a token of appreciation, I'd like to give our star volunteer a gift. A year's supply of dynamite. Use it in good health. I don't even need that. As he hands you the coupon, the clown leans in close to your ear and whispers, This was only the only warning you'll get, girl. Coupon for your supply of dynamite. Barnaby Bob gave you his coupon for your supply of dynamite. How did he know? Barnaby Bob waves and blows kisses to the cloud and crowd as you climb down from the stage, and then he disappears through the back backstage curtain. The audience gra gradually disperses. Phew. I want backstage! Phew. Well. Stares at you but makes no move to stop your egress. Sure you can find a use for your supply of dynamite. Blowing up this place. The little trailer is probably Barney B. Bob's office. Examine. Wagon is old but well maintained. A brass plaque on the door reads Barnaby Bob confirming, uh, confirming your suspicions. Peek in the window, knock on the door politely, knock on the door rudely. Peek in the window. You can see Barnaby Bob sitting at a desk. He seems to be inspecting a large map, but you can't make out any details from here. Knock on the door, Ridley. Ridley. Sit your jaw and kick the door, which slams open, rattling the entire tray like, Stride in! Just boof! <laughs> oh, sake! <it. laughs> I like the thing. <laughs> what in the- You, by the thousand hats of the red skeleton- <laughs> Girl, you must have solid brass clangers to bust into my office like this. Did you not understand the tenor of my little demonstration? Was your was the subtext lost on you? Must I drive my point into your skull in a more literal and direct manner? I'm not afraid of you, clown. You may wish to reconsider both the tone and substance of that remark, friend, because I can be damn fearsome if I so choose. Are you so thick as to not understand who and what you're dealing with? Settle down, Barney Bob. Stuff it! I'm here for your answer. Um. Gonna give them to me. Barnaby Bob slams his hands on the desk and jerks to his feet. Gonna give you uh, your eyeballs on, on a plate and fill the sockets with boiling urine. 
Don't you dare try to intimidate me in my own house as if I uh, as if I thought for one second that you had the capacity to cause me the least amount of harm. Go not upon bones who could already be baking in the desert sun. Give you a gift and a warning and I set you free with your life because I'd like a gal with an ounce of moxie, but you ain't sink it but you are sink it rapidly in my estimation. Screw you, clown. Well, that just tears it, doesn't it? Barn Bob takes his de uh, deep breath and shouts, Hey, Rube! Burly Conguard is at the door before his, or even pff, before he even hit the B and the Rube. The more, and more following uh, at a run. You don't even get the chance to draw a weapon for your uh, smashed unconscious by a fist like a white painted anvil. Oof. Wake up sometime. Great. You wake up sometime later, thoroughly bruised and battered. You've been dumped in a heap outside the circus next to your horse. I guess it's pretty lucky that you woke up at all. Barnaby Bob must really either really like you or hold you in such contempt that he doesn't think you're even worth the t trouble of murdering. No prizes for guessing which is true. Speaking of no prizes, it looks like he's taken back the coupon for the year's supply of dynamite he gave you. Congrats. <laughs> Stand up. I'm going back in! Wait. Ticket booth clown glares at you. Probably can't go back in the. But I wanted to fight! Dang, nabbit! Wait a second. Yeah, it's it's uh locked off now. Dang it. Well, I do know one thing I can do. Which is for all dead. Uh take the creep. So for all dead, um <laughs> I can I can make the soldiers go to the circus. Mm. Uh, there we go. Put the toy skeletons around the little circus tent. Barnaby Bob's going to get quite the surprise tomorrow. Revenge. Yeah. Suck it, Barnaby Bob. I have to wait a day. Which I need to wait a day anyway, so I'm gonna... You dream you're playing baseball with a red suited dwarf in the middle of the desert. Suddenly you slip slideways eyes onto your mother. You wake it up in a drenched sweat. Well, okay then. Okay. So now I don't intend to sleep again for a while. Ranch bunch. And I'll have a depressed rancher candy. Glurk. All right. Psych it, Barnaby Bob. Well, the skeleton sure did a real number on this place. There's pretty much nothing left. Jeez. Safe has been cratered uh, the ground as if thrown from a fire distance. Guess the skeletons brought explosives with them. Look inside. 
Oh, <laughs> pernicious. That looks pretty complex and has weird squiggles instead of numbers. Fortunately, the impact knocked it wide open, so it doesn't matter. It contains a few scorched and blackened fragments of what you think might be eggshell. Oh. And pretty nice pair of boots that seem undamaged. You got Barnaby Bob's burnished boots. Must be Barnaby Bob's spare boots. Wonder why he kept them in his office safe. Uh, two muscle needs to... Oh, is that better than my current one? Four armor. No. No. <laughs> Take that, Barnaby Bob. Wow, so much destroyed. That makes the world a little safer. Well, from the clouds at least. Okay. I can't even go in here anymore. Nobody threatens Zulgar Danger Butter Muffin. <laughs> yep. If I can't do it myself, then I'll get someone else to do it. Let's check out for for all dead. Let's see. Whoop. Doesn't seem to notice you. Red deployed voices on it. Yeah. Thanks, dudes. <laughs> Destroyed the people too. Nah! They're probably fine. They're probably fine. They just ran. It's fine. I don't think it attacks of aliens, you know. Oh. I'm gonna go to Ghostwood now. I'll get the login permit and then I'll I'll uh I'll end the stream. Okay. Redwood, but let me look. Ah, oh, yes, here it is. And there you are. North East Central uh, Logging Permit. Ghost of a document that grants lodging privileges for a big parcel of forest north of Redwood. I don't have to sign anything to collect it? Nope. Are you sure? No, madam, that's it. Holy crap. <laughs> nice. Ah. Uh, the freaks, though. They attack during the night. Yeah. Uh. Maybe the freaks escaped. Or they were put out of their misery. Yeah, I'm gonna see if the whiskey arrived. Um. Whiskey showed up yet? Sure did. I think you'll be glad to hear that I saved that whiskey recusation form you already filled out. You're a saint. No problem. Want a shot or a whole bottle? Uh. Hold me one. <laughs> Got it, it'll be 1,000 meat. Wow! Never mind! I only have 1,000 meat. Okay! Wait. Yes, I want to drink uh, whiskey. I will get just a shot. I can afford that. Shot of ghost whiskey. Increases your muscle mystically by 8 for the rest of the day. Be careful drinking this. If you just knock it back, it might fly out of the back of your head. Okay, so that's good. Finally! Whiskey arrived. The whiskey arrived. Redwood. I got your stuff. Oh, Bandit stiffs out of bushes the side of the road. He's pretty raggedy and also extremely burly, like a scarecrow stuffed with footballs. Hepsi pistol could be described as a hand cannon without getting metaphorical. Give me a dough. What else? Um. Hmm. Spirit spirits are powerful. Hmm, I'm just gonna fight him because I know that I'll, uh, a uh, bunk. I'll get it if I, yeah. Try to roll his unconscious body into the bushes, but it's too heavy, so you just take his gun. Imitating six, six gun. A lot of the parts of this gun are way bigger than they need to be. Plus five muscle, 10 to 13 damage. Hooray! Stop making that noise. Okay, Befell Pistol, 13 to 17, not that, uh, 17, dang. Nope, nope, yes, definitely going to improve the situation around here, thank you. Hope we never have to see in our form again. Trouble at the cemetery. 
Yo, okay, so I have all males here, but no one seems to care. Soup is done. Bread's here. I need yeast. And I need skeletons. And in. It's better than your crink gun. I mean, you don't shoot much. And it gives a strength bonus. This gives six moxie. Which I... Which I need. My moxie's pretty low. Imitate and tough customer. Chain and safe crack in. your cow puncture uh, yeah 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 well if I need it I can switch it out oh I'll go to a ranch real quick spot a tombstone nestle into some pines near a trail you dismount or approach it you can't read the inscription because it's covered in pepperoni mold collect the mold yay Ooh. oh chaos surprising Cows will hearing us. Hmm. Yeah. There's no way past these cows except through these cows. I'll do this fight and then I'll end the stream. Bonk. Easy. Hmm. Oof. Nice. Gary Foo! It's a, you insisted that those little doggies get along. Smolding leather! Three, nice. Can I can I talk? No? Oh! A place is very destroyed. Yeah, geez, I guess this used to be some kind of library. Some uh, some of the burnt up shelves still have books on them. Books exploding? Well, not usually, but Ma keeps a pretty ste steamy one hidden under a nightstand. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, gosh. Place seems blown to pieces. Uh, it used to be an undestroyed bookshelf, but not anymore. Scavenge. A uh, small diary is only illegible thing left on the shelf. Diary of Alexandria, Alexandria. <laughs> oh, I get it. It's the... Library of Alexandria. Gary reproduces through spores. Yes. Diary is crispier on the edges and it smells like gunpowder. Read it. Flip through a diary. Most of it is uninventful, describing the life of a woman who likes books and isn't interested in much else. Ends with a passage about a soldier from some near from the nearby fort, one uh, warning her about some kind of danger he wouldn't specify. So she moved her most valuable books to a cellar and took the ordinary precautions, e.g. boarding up the windows and not leaving the house at night. Turns out that isn't much good against cannonballs. Well, Cannonballs? Heap of smoldering books. Dig through it. Uh, overdue Breadwood book. Managed to find part of the overdue book from the Breadwood library. Half burned library book represents 12.5% of the total stack of Breadwood book library. <laughs> Volumes are ruined. Tom's kaput. Um, I found some chaos punch it. Woo! Yes, 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 yes. You already learned all the techniques in this book, but you pick up a few trips and tricks from poring over the uh, appendices. Footnotes about cow, cow appendices. Okay. When you work out a little bit by tearing the book in half. Grr. <laughs> half a cannonball. The front half. Investigate. Pick up the cannonball and expect it. There's an inscription that you can mostly read. It says the cannonball came from Fort Treason. It's got the address sta uh, stamped right onto the surface. Bombardment was done by the army. Horror. Hmm. 
solid steel vault door. Oh, wait, I need a cannonball that, don't I? Do I have one? Do I have a cannonball? This place has really been blown to pieces. If I had, if I had a cannonball. Don't breathe the gray dust, baby sword, Gary. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Oh, there's four trees in. I'll go here. Ah! What the heck? A ranting, flailing man that's just burst out of woods and is running straight for you. He's wearing a strange dome shaped metal hat which bristles with wires and odd protrusions, crackle intermittently with bright blue sparks. He seems upset. Errang! Fight this crazy guy, cringe, frighten him off. I'll fight him. I feel like I shouldn't, but okay. I've been to four trees and I'm not. You beat the weirdo down and take his crazy hat. They'll teach him to, do to startle innocent travelers. Crazy electric helmet. Kinds of crazy wires sticking out of it. It's not that great. Okay, I'm gonna end the stream here. Right on time. I'm good. <laughs> so, uh, this has been West of Loathing. Thank you all for coming. Um, let me see. Uh, I have a stream on next Wednesday and all of that uh, well I'll, I'll get my schedule up on my on my Twitter um, I'll have the schedule up on the Twitter and uh, that's pretty much it thank you all for coming I will see you soon also I will also possibly have something um, something special secret soon very soon e. doing what's the loathing stream tomorrow good good yeah go go to pi stream for tomorrow then yes yes so thank you all for coming and i will see you uh later bye bye <laughs>